I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorm, Maine. I've been to some thrift stores. As usual, there's a good mid-century modern uh, objects to be found. This is a really nice teak tray. It's designed by Jens Quitzgard, uh, manufactured by Dansk in the late 50s or early 60s, and it's in really, really good condition. Just needs to be cleaned up a bit. These are two really nice pieces of Coben style enamelware. They're also designed by Quiscard, and really they're in fine shape except for the handles here. And this cute little table is designed by the Eames, uh, manufactured by Herman Miller, and uh, the wire base seems fine. Uh, I gotta figure out what I can do about this top. I think the first thing I'm gonna do is start with these handles because they're gonna need a few days of finishing. They look really bad. My guess is is that uh, these were put in the dishwasher probably a lot of times. Uh, so I'll start by sanding and then I'll probably treat them with some oxalic acid. It's funny on this larger pot the handle was just kind of wedged in there if someone had put fabric in there. And there's a little spike in there, but the smaller one just uh, screwed right off. And it has a threaded rod, you know, a threaded screw in the handle. I can't imagine what would have happened or what happened to this one. There's still something in there now. I may have uh, forgotten to mention I'm sanding with the 100 grit paper. That grayness sanded off pretty quickly, but still, I'm going to treat these with oxalic acid because I can still see grayness deep into the grain. And oxalic acid is really good at taking out uh, water stains. It kind of depends on the wood, but uh, we'll see if it works on these. Now I've heated up water in the kettle this time, uh, as opposed to hot tap water because I want to mix up a strong solution. I want to mix a couple of ounces of uh, oxalic in eight ounces of water, which is a pretty strong solution. I'll, uh, I'll let those dry completely. So I'm just uh, coming in the shop after dinner to give these a quick rinse. And you can see how much better the color is now. Okay, these have uh, dried overnight. Now I'm going to sand them uh, as well as I can with 150 and then 220. All right, I've done the 150 and now I'm going to sand really well with 220. Uh, it's important, you know, because I'm sanding cross grain because it's a turning. It's not getting stained or anything, but uh, I want to sand it really well with 220. I don't want there to be any sanding marks on these. All right, I think that's good with the 220. Now I'll apply the first coat of finish. And I'm going to uh, finish these with the tongue oil varnish. I think that's going to be a great finish for these. It'll work well in a kitchen environment. Now these handles are of course uh, end grain, so the finish really soaks in. So I'll go back and apply a little more finish. I want this first coat to uh, really penetrate, and especially here, the very top of the handle where, where it really is end grain. And I'll come back and check this uh, every few minutes or so for 10 or 15 minutes and kind of keep applying it. 
All right, these have dried now for a couple of days, and uh, you know they feel a little sort of fuzzy. So the next step I'm going to do, I'm going to apply another coat, but I'm going to wet sand it. Uh, that's usually uh, reserved for like oil finishes, and although this is a varnish, a tongue oil varnish, I'm treating it like an oil finish. So I'm going to take 600 black sandpaper and uh, dip it in the varnish and sand these knobs with it. All right, now I will wipe this coat off, but just real gently. All right, so now to this table, and this is a tough one. This is a laminate top. It's all scratched up very badly. I'm not quite sure what I should do about that, but I have noticed there's some delamination occurring here at the, on the bottom most level. So I think I should take the base off and uh, glue this down first, and while I'm doing that I'll be thinking about what we can do to the top. So I've discovered that this bottom piece of laminate, it's loose all the way around on the edges. So I've, um, I've cut a piece of MDF, medium density fiberboard, which I'll use on the bottom here. And I think I'm going to use, a pot, since the laminate you know, it's non-porous material. I think I'll use uh, epoxy under there. And I'll clamp it down using this. I do have the issue of the label. I poked around the label a little bit. I don't think it wants to come off. Uh, I'm going to cut a hole in the MDF to go over it. Also, I'm going to cover the edges of the MDF with some plastic packing tape so it won't stick. You know, I put the coat on these handles about six hours ago and I wiped it off treating it like an oil finish because I didn't want it to be too shiny but as it, even as it dries I don't like it. I like the color when it was wet. I'm going to brush a coat of the varnish on here and leave it on and uh, I'll worry about the sheen later. This is dried overnight. Oh, that laminate's down fine. That worked great. I'm still a little unsure of what I'm going to do, but I have an idea. But the first step, in any case, is to clean it. I'm going to use my uh, just a commercial degreaser. 
that I like using and uh, give it a good cleaning. Boy, wouldn't it be great if it just uh, stayed the way it was looking when it was wet. Um, but it's not going to. I mean, this has some bad scratches in it. They're not coming out. Uh, you could make a case for maybe buying a piece of black laminate and re-laminating it. But anyway, I'm not going to do that. In the meantime, I'm going to try some uh, black shoe polish. Hopefully I have some. All right, I actually have some uh, black shoe polish. I do have my shoe polish kit from when I was a kid and I do polish my shoes but with brown I don't have any black shoes to give you an idea how old this is it still has a price tag on it and it was 36 cents <laughs> it does look really good Obviously, the scratches aren't going anywhere, but definitely, I like the sheen. Yeah, I think I'll, uh, I think I'll go ahead and do the whole top. I'm going to switch over to a white Scotch Brite pad. Just see how that works. All right, I'm going to let this. Uh, just dry overnight, and tomorrow I'll see what we got. And in the meantime, uh, the knobs are looking good. I want to give them another coat, a coat of satin. So I'm going to go over them really well with a uh, Scotch Bite gray pad. Thinner. Wipe these off with a little bit of uh, paint thinner. Now this is the same tongue oil finish, but uh, it's a satin. Alright, these have dried overnight. <clears throat> these look good. I'm going to wax this one more time. I used the uh, shoe polish on it. And now I'm going to use this uh, bowling alley wax. I figure that's the uh, toughest wax I probably have. And since this is the tabletop, that should work fine. All right, I'll let this dry for a while and I'll uh, sort of buff it out again. It feels really smooth and it looks good. <clears throat> now, back to the handles and the saucepans. Now I'm going to rub these out with some uh, steel wool and polish, but first I want to install them. If you remember this large one, the, it doesn't have a screw in there. It never did because it's flat on one side, but it fit in there, but it's loose. So I've got to do something to tighten that up. This is veneer scraps. And I want something really thin. And I'll try this. Try a piece here to see if we're on the, the right track. Yeah, maybe just a few of these. I notice this little thing in here is loose. What the heck is that? It's a furniture glide.
Okay, I think that's going to work well, so I'll, I'll redo it. I think I need maybe one more of a really skinny shim. You know, I was able to pull that out. I want to put it in, I want it to be so tight that I cannot pull it out. And of course, the screw goes in at the end, but I want it to be really tight. Just want to get this, this wood under that lip. That's, uh, that worked out well. It's nice and tight. The small one, I don't think is an issue. It screws on. I just got to make sure that it lines up with the hole that's already in the bottom there. I want to uh, reinstall the top uh, with its base. A little bit of epoxy on the underside here. A little alcohol. Take off that remainder. So now we'll tackle the tray. Uh, first things, I gotta get these uh, stickers off. I still have the stickers on the bottom of here too. So on something like this, that's metal. Boy, they're really stuck on there. I'll try some of this uh, Goo Gone stuff. So let it soak for a little while. I don't know if it's soaking through the paper or not, but you can, you can move the liquid under the sticker here. Still left a bunch of adhesive here. I think the the Goo Gone will take it right off. Oh yeah. And of course another way to get stickers off is uh, with the good old heat gun. Just a little bit of residue left uh, after the heat, but most of it came off. And the stickers were hiding the Dansk label. Now these stickers are different. Now I'm ready to move on to the uh, orange oil and beeswax polish. This piece is in pretty good shape, so I'm going to go over it with 4-0 steel wool and the polish. Let's see how it works on this tray. We'll let the oil sit on that for a little while. These little paint specks are maddening. I'll see if I can nick it. Now 
This one's coming out too. Oh, there we go. So there you go. These are just great, you know, objects by some heavy hitter mid-century designers. Uh, picked them up for under 20 bucks at the local thrift stores. And uh, they're just beautiful and ready for years more of service. I think they look pretty good.